All right. Be between us, be mostly me, and then finally the last one upstairs. <coughs> okay, but anyway, if you don't have a communion cup, go ahead and raise your hand. Somebody might bring you one. But uh, the reason to remember and celebrate. It was a story of a man named Frank, and he spent years away from his faith. One day he was rummaging through some of the old family possessions, and, and he found the well-worn Bible that had belonged to his grandmother. And as he opened it, he came across passages that she had written out in her, in her own hand, and he's dwelling on these and, and overcome with emotion. You know, he, he felt drawn back to what he had left behind. In that moment, he remembered not only the teachings of Jesus, but the legacy of love shared by the generations before him. Remembering is a powerful tool. You know, we need to go back to Genesis on our journey of remembering, setting the stage that'll bring us to the ultimate of what we need to remember. In Genesis chapter three, verses one through seven, we read, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, oh, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of the fruit, your eyes will be opened, and then you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And death came to God's creation. A right relationship with God was now broken. And now we are born spiritually dead, separated from God eternally because of sin. Remember where our problems began. Remember that they are rooted in our disobedience to God. Through many covenants, you know, God made the way for man to, to restore himself. Man always fell short. And we still do. It was, and it's still, an impossible task. You know, once enough chances were given by God where man couldn't say, if you'd just given us one more chance, we could have done it. We would have got ourselves straightened out. But time after time after time, through the various covenants and the law and other events, you know, it comes to the point where we know that we can't do it. You know, it's, then God started on the road or the path to our redemption. You know, think back to the time when the Israelites were, were wandering in the desert. They had, had left Egypt, crossed the, the, the Red Sea. You know, the, God parted the waters through Moses and, and all these things. And you know, they had seen God working powerfully. They carried with them the tabernacle of God. You know, is another thing to remember God's presence with them. Well, they still failed to remember. There are times when they began to grumble and complain because they didn't have all the wonderful things that they, they left behind in Egypt. They didn't remember God's provision. They didn't remember that God was with them. You know, today we're called to remember just as that tabernacle was a tangible reminder of them of God's presence. God himself, when we have come to believe, dwells in us through the Holy Spirit. And we need to remember his 
presence with us that Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remembering him is inviting his presence into our everyday struggles, into our lives, that we know we have what we need. You know, him helping us to navigate our metaphorical deserts, as it were. And remember, God already had establish a plan ready to put it into place at the fullness of time, at the right time. So we get to John the Baptist. In John chapter 1, verses 29 to 34, we read, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one of whom I said, after me comes one who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. John bore witness. He goes on, I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Remember John's experience. It was real. You know, Jesus' earliest followers also gave us something to remember. In John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51, we read the next day, John decided, or Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Peter, Philip found Nathanael. He said to him, you know, we have found the one of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. <laughs> Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. You know, and Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and he said, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascend, descending asc and ascending on the son of man. We need to remember those who first recognized and believed. They set the path for us to follow. It was just a short while later we see Jesus at the wedding at Cana where he turned water into wine. And not only was he showing compassion for those who were holding the, the wedding, it would have been terribly embarrassed to run out, out of wine halfway through the celebration. But there was uh, an even greater purpose, I believe, you know, in, in, in what we see there. Jesus uh, uh, was doing something that, that opened the eyes of his disciples. You know, John 2.11 tells us this was the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Remember the one who turned water into wine. He will meet our needs today, just as he met needs back then. We need to remember. Do you remember when Jesus was in the temple and he, and he, and he drove out the money changers? He, he poured out the bowls of coins. He turned the tables over. You know, his disciples remembered how it was written. Zeal for your house will consume me. Following this, we hear Jesus saying, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. 
this will also be remembered. Uh, John 2, 20 tell, 2 tells us that they did. When therefore he was raised up from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said to them, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. You know, sometimes we get caught up in the moment. We don't realize the significance of what's going on. You know, if we take time to remember, you know, whom it is, who is sovereign, you know, we just might gain some understanding in, in what God is doing. We need to remember that he is with us, that he is our sufficiency. We get to John 12 and Jesus, Jesus is heading towards Jerusalem. You know, a large crowd gathered because they heard that Jesus was coming. They rushed out with palm branches and crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and he sat on it just as it, as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered. These things had been written about him and had been done to him. And they remembered. You know, sometimes the things, you know, to remember might not seem pleasant. You know, sometimes, you know, the struggles we're going through, you know, and things come to our mind, we remember, but, but you know, we're, we're, we're caught up in turmoil. You know, in John 15, 18 to 20, Jesus is telling his disciples, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, because I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. you know, although at tough times, you know, things are happening to us that we really don't like, remembering is of a great benefit. You know, we, we, we see the conversation Jesus told them, I have said these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he's offering a service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour has come, you may remember that I told them to you. You know, it's a matter of that when we go through struggles, we, we, we see in other parts of the world, people are dying for their faith today. We see some more persecution coming up in this country. You know, it's a matter of things get worse and we start getting persecuted if we're, you know, God forbid that, you know, ones we'd come into the church and gain enough power, they would run us out of, the, out of the church. They can't do that because we are the church. And it's a matter of we remember who is our savior, who is our sufficiency, who is our power. That remembrance will help us to hold on to our faith and, and not fade away. We saw Thomas. Thomas saw and he believed. You know, Thomas, one of the 12, you know, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said, unless I see the nail prints in his hands, place my finger in the, in the marks, you know, the nails, and put my hands into his side, I'll never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were gathered again. Thomas was with them. And although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands? Put out your hand. Place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. 
Jesus said, if you believe because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Do you remember that old saying, seeing is believing? <laughs> Jesus said that isn't so. Remember the one who had the nail prints, the one with the scar on his side. We don't have to see him in order to remember. You know, sometimes, you know, remembering is a wake-up call. In Luke 22, Peter remembered Jesus' words. Before the ro rooster crows today, you'll deny me three times. But even in those times, remembering is a gift. We need to remember as we, when we need to return our attention to the one who died for us, the one who gave his life for us the one who loves us that much. Jesus was crucified. He was put in a, a borrowed tomb. The woman had come to prepare his body in, in the proper manner. What has happened? You know, the stone is rolled away. The body is gone. They were perplexed. Now we're approaching the greatest thing to remember at all. We read, while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood in front of them in dazzling apparel. As they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground. The men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men? and be crucified, and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. After returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. When we scratch our heads, you know, we're wondering about the circumstances that we're found in. You know, remembering is necessary. You know, remembering can help us hold on to our faith in Jesus the one who never fails, and he will never fail us. Our part is to remember. Paul, Peter, Paul wrote, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We're afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Yes, we're to remember Jesus' words. We're to remember his actions, the miracles that he performed, what he did for, for us and those around him when he was here physically on earth. We can hold great comfort we can draw great strength from those times of remembering. Our faith can grow as we continue to remember and trust in him. Today should be a time of remembering, whether in times of struggle, of trial, of persecution, or perhaps in times of, of prospering, Sometimes they're the most dangerous times. We get, we get to doing so well that we forget the one who is supplying those blessings to us. We need to rejoice in our salvation, remembering who it is who gave that gift to us. Remembering our Lord, that great gift that brought us forgiveness of sin and brought us into a right relationship with our Lord and our God. We have the gift of remembering. You know, Paul has passed us a tool that's been used for over 2,000 years. Words of Jesus commanding us to remember. Jesus' body was broken that we might be made whole. Jesus' blood was shed to institute the new covenant that sets us free from the law of sin and death brings us to a life of freedom, freedom to live an abundant, rich, whole, satisfying life. 
an extraordinary life as God's adopted children. As I reflect on the Last Supper, I think of the sheer weight of that moment. You know, Jesus gathered with his disciples, knowing what lay ahead. You know, each piece of bread, each sip of wine, not just a meal, but a profound moment of connection. It was a moment to remember. Imagine being there, feeling the tension in the air, knowing that Jesus was consciously preparing them for a world without him physically present. Remembering Jesus is like holding on to that intimate moment, undeterred by time, filled with longing and love. Perhaps today you have no reason to remember to remember Jesus and, and all he said and what he did. You haven't come to believe in him. And I hope that's not anybody in this room, but it's a matter he did give us a promise of eternal life to those who do believe. In a moment, we're gonna sit at the Lord's table and you might wanna let it pass and not partake with us if you haven't believed. But far better right now you don't have to come forward. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to shout out spoken words. Right in your heart, you can tell the Lord Jesus, what I've heard today, I believe. I want to give myself to you. I want your forgiveness of sin. I believe, and so therefore I know that I've received your promise of eternal life. I want to live for you. You know, we tell him that we know we don't deserve anything from him. We, we all fall short of the glory of God. But in receiving him, we've received forgiveness of our sins. Have, have we become sinless? No, but we sin less because we want to say thank you to him for that gift he has given to us. He has set us free and adopted us as his children. Do this. And then join us as we listen to Paul's words as he tells us the reason to remember and celebrate, to remember the command that we have from the Lord. Paul told the church in Corinth, he said, I have received from the Lord what I was also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father God, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are willing to leave the glory you had with Father to come down and live here fully as, as a man, still God, but, but fully a man. And, and through all that you went through in your you know, 33 years here, the, 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 the pain as, as, as you were beaten with those whips that had chunks of, of, of metal to shred your body, Lord, your body broken in that way. But you did it out of your love for us. Thank you that you were willing to have your body broken in that way that we might be whole. Help us as we remember that this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take together. Remembering Jesus' broken body for us. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper and saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we do thank you, Jesus. Not only was your body broken, shredded, your, the, the nails through your hands, the the, the, the wound in your side, but your blood was spilled out. 
we think that we're told without the shedding of blood, there is no sacrifice. But you were that sacrifice for us. You gave yourself, allowed your blood to be shed, that we are now washed by it. We are, we are white as snow because of your sacrifice, your blood shed for us. So thank you, Jesus. Let's partake together. Remembering Jesus, his broken body, his shed blood. You know, I almost have to sing this. So I'll try to, rest- I probably won't. <clears throat> when you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams, when your hopes have been crushed by Satan's manifested schemes, when you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fear, Remember, remember our creator, remember our savior, remember his gift to us. In doing so, you will have the provision, you have the power to to live for him, no matter what the circumstances we find ourselves in. Remember, Lord. Again, we thank you so much, Lord. We look through through the, the, the history for, written down for us from Genesis on through. Lord, we, we see reasons to remember over and over again. And you are the greatest reason. We thank you. Draw us closer to you each day, Lord. And let us shine forth that those around us might come to the point they have something to remember too as well. And to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.